Different. Senator. The Republican Party, since I've been in the Senate and since President Obama has been in office, has played a terrible, terrible role of being total obstructionist. Every effort that he has made, that some of us have made, they have said no, no, no. Now, in my view, the only way we can take on the right-wing Republicans, who, by the way, I hope will not continue to control the Senate in the House when one of us is elected president, but the only way we can get things done is by having millions of people coming together. If we want free tuition at public colleges and universities, millions of young people are going to have to demand it and give the Republicans an offer they can't refuse. If we want to raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour, workers are going to have to come together and look the Republicans in the eye and say, we know what's going on. You vote against us. You are out of your job. We're going to hear from all the, we're going to hear from all the candidates coming up. We're going to take a short break. More from the candidates in a moment. this final round of the CNN Democratic presidential debate. Uh, this is a question to each of you. Each of you, by the way, are going to have a closing uh, statements to make. Each will you have 90 seconds. But a final question to each of you. If you can, just try to 15 seconds if you can. Uh, Governor Chafee, Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said, I ask you to judge me by the enemies I have made. You've all made a few people upset over your political careers. Which enemy are you most proud of? <laughs> I guess the coal lobby. I've worked hard for climate change, and I want to work with the coal lobby, uh, but in my time in the Senate, tried to bring them to the table so that we could address carbon dioxide. I'm proud to uh, be at odds with the coal lobby. Governor O'Malley? The National Rifle Association. <laughs> Secretary Clinton? Well, in addition to the NRA, uh, the health insurance companies, the drug companies, um, the Iranians, um, <laughs> Probably the Republicans. <laughs> Senator Sanders? As someone who has taken on probably every special interest that there is in Washington, uh, I would lump Wall Street and the pharmaceutical industry at the top of my list of people who do not like me. <laughs> Senator Webb? I'd have to say the enemy soldier that threw the grenade that wounded me but he's not around right now to <laughs> talk to. All right, time for closing statements. Each of you will have 90 seconds. Governor Chafee, let's begin with you. Thank you, Anderson. Thank you, CNN. And thank you, Facebook, for sponsoring this debate. America has many challenges confronting us, ending the perpetual wars, addressing climate change, addressing income inequality, funding education, funding infrastructure, funding health care, helping black Americans, helping Native Americans. We have many challenges. Who's best able to confront these challenges? I've served in government at many levels. I know what it's like to solve problems at the local level because I did it as mayor. I know how to get legislation passed through Congress because I did it as a senator. I know how to turn around a state because I did it as governor of Rhode Island. But what I'm most proud of is that in 30 years of public service, I have had no scandals. I have high ethical standards. And what I'm most proud of is my judgment, particularly in the Iraq war vote. There was a lot of pressure, political pressure, public pressure, but I did my homework. And I did not believe that the evidence was there that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, and we live now with the consequences. So that kind of judgment is what we want in a president going forward. And I'm running for president to end the wars. I want to be the peacemaker. I am a proven peacemaker. Please go to Chafee 2016 to learn more about me. Thank you. Governor Chafee, thank you very much. Senator Webb, your final statement for 90 seconds. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure to be with you tonight. You've heard a lot of promises up here. You've heard a lot of rhetoric. They all seem to happen during campaigns, and then once the election's over, people start from scratch again and try to get things done. One of the things I can promise you, if you look at my record in and out of government, is that I've always been willing to take on the complicated, sometimes unpopular issues 
and work them through the complex issues and work them through in order to have a solution. Uh, we did it in criminal justice reform. We've had a lot of discussion here about criminal justice reform. We did it in other ways. We need a national political strategy for our economy, for our foreign policy, for social justice, and by the way, for how you run and manage the most complex bureaucracy in the world, which is the federal government. I know how to lead. I did it in Vietnam. I did it in the Pentagon. I did it in the Senate. And if you will help me overcome this cavalcade of, of financial ir irregularities and money that is poisoning our political process, I am ready to do that for you in the White House. Senator Webb, thank you very much. <laughs> Governor O'Malley, you have 90 seconds. Anderson, thank you. I am very, very grateful to have been able to be on this stage with this distinguished group of candidates tonight. And what you heard tonight, Anderson, was a very, very, and all of you watching at home, was a very, very different debate than from the sort of debate you heard from the two presidential Republican uh, uh, debates. On this stage, on this stage, you didn't hear anyone uh, denigrate women. You didn't hear anyone make racist comments about new American immigrants. You didn't hear anyone speak ill of another American because of their religious belief. What you heard instead on this stage tonight was an honest search for the answers that'll move our country forward, to move us to a 100% clean electric energy grid by 2050, to, to take the actions that we have always taken as Americans so that we can actually attack injustice in our country, employ more of our people, rebuild our cities and towns, educate our children at higher and better levels, and include more of our people in the economic, social, and political life of our country. I truly believe that we are standing on the threshold of a new era of American progress. Unless you become discouraged about our gridlock in Congress, talk to our young people under 30, because you'll never find among them people that want to bash immigrants or people that want to deny rights to gay couples. That tells me we are moving to a more connected, generous, and compassionate place. And we need to speak to the goodness within our country. Governor O'Malley, thank you very much. Senator Sanders, final closing thoughts, 90 seconds. This is a great country, but we have many, many serious problems. We should not be the country that has the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major country and more wealth and income inequality than any other country. We should not be the only major country on earth that does not guarantee health care to all of our people as a right of citizenship. And we should not be the only major country that does not provide medical and, per and parental leave, family and parental leave, to all of our families. Now, at the end of the day, here is a truth that very few candidates will say, is that nobody up here, certainly no Republican, can address the major crises facing our country unless millions of people begin to stand up to the billionaire class that has so much power over our economy and our political life. Jim Webb is right. Money is pouring into this campaign through super PACs. We are doing it the old-fashioned way, 650,000 individual contributions. And if people want to help us out, BernieSanders.com, we are averaging 30 bucks a piece. We would appreciate your help. Secretary Clinton. Thank you very much, Anderson, and thanks to all the viewers who tuned in tonight. I think what you did see is that in this debate, we tried to deal with some of the very tough issues facing our country. That's in stark contrast to the Republicans who are currently running for president. What you have to ask yourself is who amongst us has the vision for actually making the changes that are going to improve the lives of the American people? Who has the tenacity and the ability and the proven track record of getting that done. Now, I revere my late mother, and she gave me a lot of good advice, but one of the best pieces of advice she gave me was, you know, the issue is not whether or not you get knocked down, it's whether you get back up. 
America's been knocked down. That great recession, nine million people lost their jobs. Five million lost their homes. Thirteen trillion dollars in wealth disappeared. And although we've made progress, we're standing but not running the way America needs to. My mission as president will be to raise incomes for hardworking middle class families and to make sure that we get back to the basic bargain I was raised with. If you work hard and you do your part, you should be able to get ahead and stay ahead. Please join me in this campaign. Please come and make it clear that America's best days are still ahead. Thank you very much. Well, that does it for this Democratic presidential debate. On behalf of everyone at CNN, we want to thank the candidates, our debate partners at Facebook, the Wynn Resort, and the Democratic National Committee. Thanks also to Dana Bash, Juan Carlos Lopez, and Don Lemon. We'll be back in Las Vegas December 15th when CNN hosts our next Republican.